Welcome to another episode of the Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Medicine podcast, the world's longest running medical podcast. And uh, and here I've, I've got uh, uh, Dr. Brendel, is that right? That's yeah, that's right. right. And, um, and uh, he's uh, presented a paper here at the Society of uh, Nuclear Medicine meeting in Anaheim. And uh, and it was a very interesting paper because it's it, it covers an area that hasn't been done very well before. Um, Perhaps we can start by, by telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm a, a nuclear medicine uh, physician at the Department of Nuclear Medicine in, in Munich. Uh, I've worked there since now uh, eight years. And um, yes, my focus is on uh, neurodegenerative disorders. And the uh, focus at the moment is uh, definitely uh, tau pet imaging. And yes, so tau pet, of course, is uh, interesting uh, not only in AD, but also in uh, non-AD tau pathies. And yes, that's why we uh, explored uh, PSP for uh, using a new second generation tau ligand. Right, so uh, perhaps you could explain uh, what is PSP? Yes, uh, PSP is a uh, atypical Parkinsonian syndrome. It's uh, it's characterized by early uh, postural instability and, and falls. And um, from the histopathology, it's a four-hour tau pathy, so it's tau with four repeats uh, isoform, um, and uh, that's located primarily in the basal ganglia and the midbrain, which uh, also um, causes these uh, symptoms the patients have. So they have a, also a, a strong um, impairment of the volitional eye movements. Um, so that's why. Uh, yeah, they have. Uh, not, not, they do not really good perform for viewing and things, and uh, have uh, have a limitation of their saccades. Right, and it does lead on to dementia as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it has, it has some parts, uh, at least some patients suffer also from uh, dementia then, and it's uh, a very fast uh, neurodegeneration that occurs uh, mostly in the mid of the 60s, and it's leading to death in uh, approximately eight years after symptom onset. So um, the patients really suffer from this disease. Right. Now, so the symptoms are somewhat like Parkinson's disease, but it's, it's not the same as Parkinson's disease. Yeah. How do they normally tell the difference between that and Parkinson's disease or Lewy body disease? Yeah, so, so the first it's not so easy to differentiate it so in the, that, that's also a problem for PSP so um, normally most patients get diagnosed as uh, a PD first and um, then after some years uh, they uh, get some more symptoms than just uh, the, the problem uh, f walking and all that stuff uh, so they suffer from dementia they suffer um, from their volitional eye movement impairment and uh, they fall very often and that's yeah of course causing other problems like broken legs and all this uh, things and um, yeah so after some years then often uh, PSP gets then diagnosed uh, additionally uh, to the PD what was diagnosed before. But the only real way of properly diagnosed is after death by doing a, 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 yes. a, a, a looking at the tissue itself. Yes so in, in, uh, if the disease is already established, then the clinicians have a, a pretty good accuracy on the diagnosis. So um, after four or five years of uh, after symptom onset, they, they predict uh, PSP very well uh, in autopsy then. Uh, however, there is a, the biggest problem is in the first years of, right. the, of the disease. So the, the traditional methods of, uh, of, of diagnosing this with imaging um, uh, you said it's a tau opthy, so do, do have all the tau traces that we've used before, <laughs> have they worked? Yeah, so before it was um, in, the, in the new uh, classifications, um, it was uh, implemented a uh, midbrain atrophy and uh, hypometabolism in the midbrain and FTG PET. So these two imaging modalities already work uh, for PSP, um, but there has not so, uh, not so much work been done um, with, with tau tracers. Right. And, and the tau tracers that we've got on the market at the moment or been used at the moment uh, 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 AV1451 and uh, um, uh, there, was a, there was a Japanese compound yeah, and a few THK. other compounds. Yeah. Those compounds are more specific for Alzheimer's disease than, uh, uh, than, uh, yeah, than so PSP? Yeah, actually we also did a study in, in PSP with the THK compound and of course, so interestingly, we were able to discriminate uh, PSP from healthy conscious pretty well. Uh, however, it was clearly shown that the signal we got was not uh, tau, but it was uh, the Mayo B elevation most uh, um, likely deriving from astrocytosis in these in these ah, patients. So, uh, so what what you really saw was off-target binding. Yeah, sure. So we, we had off-target binding that nicely discriminated the, the patients, <laughs> but of course it's uh, we are not specific with uh, with this method. It it would definitely help for uh, differential diagnosis, I think, because of the regional distribution of the tracer. Uh, however, if you want to do like um, uh, yeah therapy studies with anti-tau um, li uh, anti-tau uh, uh, 
radiopharmaceuticals or, uh, or pharmaceuticals, uh, yeah. anti-tau therapies, so you have a problem there because you can't prove that it's really tau in the right. patient. And we've got a number of anti-tau therapies that are being trialled at the moment actually yeah. to treat Alzheimer's disease, haven't we? Sure, yes, and uh, some of them will likely be also available maybe for, for our tau perceived, and uh, yes, that's why we should uh, definitely um, have a clear a statement if it's tau in the patient or not. Right. So um, you used a, a different tracer. What what was that tracer? So yes, yeah, so the, the new ligand is a PI2620 from uh, live molecular uh, imaging, and yes, yeah, so this tracer has uh, got rid of these uh, off touch bindings. So they were clearly able to show that this has not uh, any um, mono amino oxidase uh, off target uh, binding uh, any longer. And yeah, that's why we thought, okay, this could be a good tracer to use it also in in PSP then. Okay, so what did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, we we started to evaluate uh, the scans after uh, patients got to our to our clinical department, and we in the, in the first patients we clearly saw an elevated signal in the basal ganglia, so especially in the globus pallidus, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, that's why we then uh, had some examinations of brain slices. So we uh, tried first to look if it's really a signal um, deriving from uh, tau there, and um, so the autoradiography was clearly positive uh, by using this lichen could block it with a cold ligand and we did not see any signal in healthy controls. So that was what made us very confident uh, that it's really the tau in the, um, in the basal ganglia that we uh, imaged by the, by the binding of PI2620. And um, we also had, uh, in collaboration with Life Molecular, they uh, did some micro and they were also able to prove that it's um, really co-localized um, PI26 binding and um, tau immunohistochemistry. So that was what, what made us even more confident that it's, uh, it's working as a really tau trace in PSP. Right, so, th so this means that we'll be able to diagnose this disease more definitively and yeah. perhaps in the future uh, have a therapy for it. Yes, yeah, so um, we, we evaluated now uh, 48 uh, cases with uh, PSP and um, we had uh, like 80% uh, of them were clearly tau positive um, with quantitative and visual methods and um, the, the even more uh, good thing is that we did only have one disease control and no healthy control that had any signal in, um, right. in binding of these tracers because so for the anti-tau treatment, it would be very helpful to have a specific tracer, so to rule out um, cases that don't have any tau in, in their brain, because there the therapy will not work. Right. And, and of course, uh, um, so, so that means that you're really going to, and you're also going to target the ones that have got a high enough level of tau in them to be actually useful in the therapy. So yeah. you may be 80%, not 100% positive, but perhaps that other 20% wouldn't be suitable for therapy anyway. Yeah, so maybe they don't have a, we don't have histopathology of them, of course, uh, until right. now, but um, yeah, so we don't know if they really have a tau in the brain in the end then, or if they are really negative. So. Right. Right. This will, of course, be that what needs to be investigated in, in future uh, for these cases. Right, so are they, these people going to be donating their brains and, 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 and following up with Yes, yeah, so we hope that we will at least get, uh, get some of their brains, um, that they will donate uh, to our uh, brain bank in, in Munich and the Leipzig and Cologne. And yes, so then we can maybe uh, have a good validation of the tracer as well. Right. So this is a fairly rare disease, but it's an important disease to actually manage, isn't it? Yes, yes. And um, so what I got to know in the last uh, couple of years was that PSP is not so um, low frequent as, as most of the ah, uh, people okay. think. So from our histopathology department, they told us it's the third uh, common after AD and FTD oh, really? um, uh, neurodegenerative disorder. So um, maybe because it's also underdiagnosed in, in the clinical routine. Yeah. Okay, well, this might help with it with it being <laughs> under, underdiagnosed. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's now pretty common to get tau imaging and amyloid imaging uh, uh, yeah, around, sure. and yeah. uh, particularly in research. Yeah, and, and we also experienced this with one of our cases. So we had a pretty interesting case. He was um, first uh, diagnosed as an um, probable AD. Then um, they wanted to put him into an anti-amyloid therapy study, and uh, this screening scan was negative then. Right, so, <laughs> so in yeah. these subjects, the amyloid scan is negative, right? Yes, so no yes, amyloid. the amyloid scan is negative. Um, and uh, interestingly, with this case, we performed a PI 2620 tau pad and uh, yeah we observed a pattern that was looked so similar to the PSP cases we experienced before and then we um, sent this patient to the movement disorders uh, specialty center and they clearly uh, diagnosed the PSP uh, with frontal uh, dominant signs then. Oh that's great. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Oh, well done. Great research. So what else would you like to add? What else can you tell us about where you're going next or what's happening next? Yes, so we, we will uh, definitely for this uh, moment, it's, an, it's just an evaluation of, of scans that we performed at the, at the clinical uh, department. And uh, yes, this tracer, of course, should be evaluated in a, in a prospective trial um, so that we can generate enough evidence um, to use it really then in, in clinical routine. Okay. Um, so where can people find out a bit more about your work? Yes, yeah, so we will hopefully um, publish this, uh, this first data soon, and um, yes, then it should appear online. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you very much. And uh, are you enjoying the meeting? Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's good. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a nice city, and so, yeah, so we have a good time here. All right. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, and yeah. thanks for being on the podcast.